Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I want to give you three things to consider before buying an electric car. There are many reasons to buy an electric car, and for me personally, I love the idea of electric vehicles, and I'll probably look at the electric market when it's time to replace my own vehicle, but just like taking on something new that you're unfamiliar with in other parts of life, such as getting a pet for the first time or getting an exotic pet, there are some things to consider that you might not always be thinking about when you first start to explore them. So in this video, I wanted to share three areas that you might want to think about, not as a deterrent or reason you shouldn't get an electric vehicle, but as things to consider as you're making an informed decision about how best to set up your life and change your lifestyle to make it work great. So with that thought in mind, let's jump into it. The first aspect of an electric vehicle that I wanted to discuss is that of charging it at home or wherever you're spending most of your time through the night. Because that's a big concern, most people are charging their vehicles uh, where they live primarily. When it comes to electric vehicles, depending on the brand and model, there could be different kinds of connectors, but the electric vehicle manufacturers have done a pretty good job of supplying various kinds of chargers and lots of different customizable adapters to fit all sorts of different applications. The thing to consider at home though is how much power it's really going to take to charge the vehicle and also how long it's going to take. Electric vehicle manufacturers have made it possible, in some cases, even to charge your vehicle with just an ordinary extension cord and a regular 120 volt, 15 amp outlet. But you need to realize that charging is going to be based on two factors, the voltage of the supply and the current available at that voltage. So for example, if you're plugging into a 120 volt and 15 amp receptacle, the vehicle is going to charge much, much slower than it's going to charge if you have it on a 230 or 240 volt circuit and can supply 50 or 60 amps. Because power is roughly calculated by multiplying the voltage times the amperage, you're really going to see a reduction when you're only using 120 volts and 15 amps from what you would get if you're doing 240 volts at 60 amps. It's actually a multiplication two times more voltage and four times more amperage makes overall eight times faster charging in that type of setup. If you're gonna plug in a vehicle with a battery that's almost completely depleted and you plug it into a regular 120 volt 15 amp receptacle, you're gonna find that it might take several days to get it to full charge. Whereas if you're able to plug it into the higher voltage and higher amperage supply, it's going to charge a lot quicker, but a lot quicker means that it's probably still at least eight to 10 hours from completely depleted state. Now this might not matter very much as most people commute in less than 50 kilometers a day, but if you're thinking about taking longer trips more frequently, or if you need to commute farther, it's something to keep in mind because if you're not able to charge to full capacity every time, then the net effect is as the week wears on, your battery is gonna get lower and lower and you're gonna need to find some other alternate charging arrangements. Now, of course, depending on where you work, you might also be able to plug the vehicle in during the day, but it's something to keep in mind as managing the charging cycle is going to be crucial to making it not feel like your electric vehicle is a burden. Also, when it comes to charging, it's simple now to just simply look at the rate of electricity that you're paying, the kilowatt hour rate on your electric bill, but be aware that part of the fuel costs when it comes to conventional gasoline or diesel is used to pay for the road system. So as we see more and more embracing of electric vehicles, and we see more and more legislation that's mandating them to be on the roads, we're also going to see a higher tax rate on electricity to offset those costs. It is something to keep in mind that the fixed cost of electricity you're expecting now is likely going to increase when those things come around. It's also important to realize that to use the large rapid chargers for electric vehicles, they do require quite a bit more power at home. And so you might need electrical upgrades. And the best option there is to see an electrician in your local area to see what you need in your particular case. Especially if you have things like a hot tub, swimming pool, air conditioning, and that kind of thing. To have all of those things running and then add electric vehicle charging could be too much and might need some electrical upgrades or some more complicated setups. Those can add significantly more money depending on the situation. The second item I want to discuss is what to do when you're traveling longer distances. Now, of course, there are charging stations uh, in a lot of places nowadays, and there's more coming online all the time. But charging an electric vehicle typically takes a lot longer than getting gas at a gas station. And so you can expect 
a lot more interruption to your travel plans if you're expecting to go long ways with electric vehicles. The other thing about electric vehicles is that unlike gas vehicles, which typically run best at about 90 to 100 kilometers, most efficient use of fuel, an electric vehicle is actually less efficient when it comes to long distance because you're doing less braking, which helps to regenerate the batteries. Running at a higher speed for a longer time also produces more heat in the motors and in the batteries themselves. And so you're gonna lose a little bit of efficiency when you're doing these faster highway type trips than you would inside the city where the vehicle conserves power in a lot of situations. As I said at the start, I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't have an electric vehicle, but of course you need to consider what's gonna happen when you wanna take it a little further than just within town. Now, a lot of electric vehicles have a range that's still under or around 500 kilometers, so it's something to really keep in mind. Also understanding what the range is and how it's measured is really important because just like gasoline or diesel powered vehicles, there is sometimes some manipulation of the numbers by the manufacturers and you need to understand under what conditions you're really going to get that mileage. Just like a gas powered vehicle in the winter, you're gonna see reduced mileage and cold temperatures, it always is going to have an impact on efficiency. Also using a lot of the electric systems on board, of course, things like having the stereo cranked up or your air conditioning on max or your heat on max, all of those things are going to use more power as well. And on longer trips, we tend to use more of them as we wanna be more comfortable. So those are some things to keep in mind as you're traveling, as well as the idea that even though you might find a lot of electric chargers available on your route, there are increasingly more resources online that tell you where those chargers are and how you can access them. As the number of electric vehicles on the road increases and the infrastructure struggles to catch up, though there might be a rapid charging station nearby or right on your route, you might find that when you roll up to the station, all of the bays are already taken and you'll need to wait. If you were planning on waiting an hour, let's say for a quick charge, and now it's two hours because you have to wait for other people, that's something to keep in mind as well. Lastly, it's probably a good idea to check with hotels that you might be staying at because often they do have rapid charging, but again, in limited quantities. And so as electric vehicles become a lot more popular, there's going to be a bit of a mismatch where there might not be enough stalls for the number of people who are needing to charge up overnight. The last aspect I wanted to touch on is maintenance or service of an electric vehicle. There's some really good news when it comes to electric vehicles and maintenance because a lot of the routine maintenance that needs to be done in an internal combustion vehicle doesn't need to be done in an electric vehicle. For example, oil changes aren't necessary because there isn't a need for oil to be circulating around the motor like there is in an internal combustion engine. Certain components like brakes take much, much longer to wear out and need replacement. Electric vehicles use something called regenerative braking, which means that when you wanna slow down and you press on the brake, it doesn't immediately engage the physical brakes, but it starts to use the motors in the vehicle as generators, which are recharging the battery and also creating a braking action because the force inside the generator counteracts the force being put on it by your momentum of travel. One common misconception people have with regenerative braking is that somehow it makes your battery last a lot longer. At the end of the day, if you're going down a hill and up a hill, it's not making you any extra power, but it is reducing the amount of power that's being used overall because it's giving some of it back on the downward part and then using it back up on the upward part of the hill. This isn't a perpetual motion machine. It doesn't create free energy. It just conserves some of the energy lost by regeneratively braking instead of using the physical brakes. As a result, the physical brakes don't wear out and sometimes they actually can corrode because they don't get enough use. So maintenance to keep those brakes functioning and in good condition, not because of overuse, but because of underuse is something to consider. Of course, things like windshield wipers or washer fluid or those kinds of things are gonna be used the same as they would on a regular gas or diesel vehicle. And some other things are going to possibly need replacement a little sooner, things like tires, because electric vehicles typically are heavier because of the batteries. In striving for efficiency, electric vehicles often also use custom tires that might not be available for regular vehicles. And so you might need to plan a little bit further ahead than you would with regular gas or diesel vehicles because the tire sizes and or profiles might not be as readily available. And the last part when it comes to service is availability of service centers. 
For the traditional brands that have a big dealer network, this is less of a problem, although because electric vehicles are less prevalent in the market, there may be a shortage of parts or a bit of a delay while they get shipped to the location. When you come to vehicle manufacturers that don't have a traditional dealer network, especially when it comes to Tesla, where you live and how close you are to a service center could make a big difference on how fast it's going to be to get your vehicle repaired and even how much it could cost. If you live near a major city, you're probably not going to have a big issue, but if you live in a more rural area and the closest technicians are a long ways away from you, it could make that experience a lot more expensive and a lot slower than it would be for a regular internal combustion vehicle. That's about all I wanted to get into for this particular video. If you have questions that I didn't answer that you're curious about when purchasing an electric vehicle, let me know in the comments or send me an email. My information's in the description below. Are you considering buying an electric vehicle or have you already bought one? Share your experience in the comments as well or send me an email there too. Technology is changing so quickly in the world that we live and we can expect great innovations in all sorts of areas. Electric vehicles and many other types of devices are going to become more and more prevalent. And so it's important to understand the difference and educate ourselves a little bit before we consider buying them. If you like this kind of content, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel as I post a new video every week on a wide variety of DIY and electrical topics and I'm sure there's something that'll interest you in the future. Thanks for watching, and until next time, in all your DIY projects and quest for knowledge, don't be afraid to be balder.